life. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us that people have different levels of their intention. Not everybody's the same. You can't say, oh, he was sincere in Salat and he was sincere. Maybe they both were sincere, but they have different levels. Because that's why the Prophet mentioned in there, in the Ma'amadah dunya. Letting us know that some people make hijrah for the dunya. And some people make hijrah for Allah and His Messenger. So they're on different levels. And, or to take some woman in marriage, that's another level. Or to uh, some worldly gain, for some worldly reason, they want to do business. They're on a different level. Everyone's on a different level. And your ibadah and your iman is on different levels. We're, we're not all the same and our iman doesn't stay the same all the time. Also, another thing we get from this hadith is that one of the best deeds you can do as a Muslim, I'm going to erase some of this, one of the best things that you can do is make hijrah. Hijrah, one of best deeds. One of the best deeds that you can do in Islam is hijrah. One of the best types of worship. Another uh, meaning leaving non-Muslim land to live in a Muslim land or something like this. Wherever you can practice your religion the best. Also in this hadith, this hadith shows us the importance of traveling for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when you travel, because the Prophet said, who makes the hijr to Allah and his messenger. So that means if you travel, any kind of travel, as the ulama mentioned, that if you travel to do Talib al ilm for the sake of Allah, you come, you leave Toronto to come to Mecca or Medina to seek knowledge or go to Yemen or go to some place to study Islam, that this is one of the best deeds you can do. And this hadith illustrates for us the importance of seeking knowledge and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and traveling to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's one of the ways you can travel. Of course, jihad fi sabidillah, going and traveling for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also a great type of worship and a way of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another uh, benefit of this hadith is that it also shows us that you should try to make hijrah or leave bad lands to uh, bad places to good places and bad people to good people. So for example, if you're at school or you're in some environment and you have bad people around you, bad friends, you want to stay away from the bad people. This one, he does drugs. This one, she does other bad things. This one drinks alcohol. You want to stay away from those people. That's a type of hijra. You're making hijra from them and be around the people who are good, who can remind you of the law. They tell you about worship. They say, hey, let's go to the lecture. Let's go do this. Let's go read Quran. They teach you, uh, remind you of good things. So you should also try to make hijra from the bad people to the good people. Okay? That's also a type of hijrah. And also hijrah from people of bid'ah to people of sunnah. Uh, another benefit of this hadith, uh, and there are so many, is, uh, and we pretty much already said that, that That, uh, that this ikhlas is a shart min shurut kabul al-amal, that you have to have ikhlas or sincerity, a sincere intention. It's one of the conditions for having your deeds accepted by Allah, is that you have sincerity, and of course the second one is following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu And those are just some tiny benefits from this hadith, so that way we know and have an understanding of this hadith and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said incorrect was from myself and the shaitan.